France, his president Emmanuel Macron and the German Chancellor Angela Merkel both highlighted the importance of the Franco-German relationship during a media conference in Berlin on Sunday. Early in the day, Macron joined Merkel and the German president Frank-Walter Steinmeier to place wreaths at the site of the Neuwach War Memorial in Berlin. There, Macron evoked a world at a crossroad in his speech, pitted nationalist movements with no memory against more modern, progressive ones. Last week, he had warned against the perils of nationalism at commemorations in Paris to mark the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, sparking outcry from US President Donald Trump, who blasted the French leader on Twitter days later. China's President Xi Jinping is in Brunei on a state visit, the first by a Chinese head of state in 13 years. He was warmly received by the country's senior officials at the Bandar Seri Bagawan Airport, where he stressed that China and Brunei are close neighbors across the sea and are friends and partners who trust each other as the two sides of a long history of friendly exchanges. Since the establishment of diplomatic ties 27 years ago, the two countries have been treating each other as equals and scoring deepening political mutual trust and fruitful results in various cooperation projects, which brought tangible benefits to the two peoples and made positive contributions to peace and prosperity in the region. President Xi's visit is the second stop in his ongoing Asia-Pacific tour he has paid a state visit to Papua New Guinea, met with leaders from Pacific Island countries that have diplomatic ties with China, and attended the Apex Summit in Papua New Guinea's capital, Port Mosby. Meanwhile, Pope Francis spent his Sunday having lunch with around 3,000 poor people and a group of volunteers following a mass for the World Day of the Poor in St. Peter's Basilica. The pontiff thanked all the people who prepared the lunch, which was provided by Hilton Hotel and the waiting staff, asking God to bless all the people in the room. He told the crowd, injustice is the perverse root of poverty. The cry of the poor daily becomes stronger but heard less, drowned out by the din of the rich few, who grow ever fewer and more rich. According to a report by Oxfam, 3.7 billion people saw no increase in their wealth in 2017, while 82% of the wealth generated last year went to the richest 1% of the global population. Welcome back to Diplomatic Channel. Turkey is determined to bring justice for Jamal Khashoggi, the Saudi journalist whom we have learned was killed inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. While it's no longer news, some high-profile people were involved in that murder and the prosecutors seek in the death penalty for those involved. The CIA says it believes Khashoggi's killing was ordered by the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Remember, Turkey has said before the monarchy had something to do with the killing, but this time, it's the first time the United States Intelligence Agency is corroborating that story. However, the U.S. is yet to reach a final conclusion on the journalist's murder. As sources claim they do not believe the journalist could have been killed without the crown prince's knowledge. Saudi Arabia has, of course, denied that. I want to bring in preventive counterterrorism consultant and security strategist Temitopo Olodo to discuss what we have learned so far. He joins us now from London Ms. Alodo, thank you for joining us on Diplomatic Channel. What do you make of this uh, startling revelation or something we already know? I think it's more or less uh, something we already know. We're just waiting for official confirmation. There have been so much twist in the story since 2nd of October that a lot of people are not really um, surprised because initially uh, the Saudi uh, kingdom denied any knowledge of where he was, uh, the fact that he left and had a double person, you know, pretending to be him. And now we've got to a point where they've agreed 
that he's been killed within their consulate. But not only that, they've now agreed that certain people will face the death penalty. We've not had the last of this, but examples must be made. People must be punished because we don't want the sanctuary of a diplomatic um, environment to be tarnished by this incident. Now, I'm thinking how this reflects on governments around the world and, of course, the safety of uh, journalists. Um, uh, uh, people in power do not like being criticized and being put on the spot. How can journalists better protect themselves so they do not end up becoming victims of senseless killings? I think this is quite important because we know that uh, over 2,500 journalists have been killed since 1990, with the highest uh, being 12 years ago in 2006, being 155. But it's not only journalists that have been targeted by uh, you know, ro rogue regime, if I could call them that. You know, in a in a in a in, in a diplomatic setting, you know, if a journalist have done something wrong, you could you know take a labor case against them or you know report them to the uh, appropriate authorities. But for people to you know go out for extra uh, extrajudicial killing, that is not right. And journalists need to be protected. And that's why the United Nations need to get involved in this. And we need to get other organizations, re reputable organizations involved and government to ensure that journalists who are doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, freedom of speech and freedom of press must be sustained. Uh, Turkey seems to have all of the facts. They seem to have enough evidence now to put Saudi Arabia in that spot. Is that surprising for you? And what could they do with all the information they're gathering on the murder of Jamal Khashoggi? Because at this point, it's clear that they are determined to get to the bottom of what happened and perhaps get the Saudi government to admit that it did commit mur uh, a murder or a crime. There is no doubt in my mind that uh, even if Saudi government is trying to reject the assertion that they are not directly responsible, there's something called vicarious liability, which means that this incident was as a result of their neg negligence or criminal negligence, and they should be held responsible for it one way or the other. One thing I would have expected the Saudi government to do is to put their hands up and say, you know what? Even if it was not a direct, um, direct directive from from the from the kingdom, we are taking full responsibility because it happened under our watch. And the fact that a lot of uh, loopholes have been left open, a lot of authorities have lied to our people, and authorities have lied to us about this whole incident. Put their hands up and accept it, and then say, okay, we're going to investigate it in in a much better and transparent way. But for them to continue to deny any uh, any responsibility for it is totally out of order. Well, not that they deny responsibility for it. They did say that it was a botched interrogation and uh, things got out of hand and Khashoggi was, was, was put in a chokehold position and he suffocated from there. Now, what happens afterwards? Saudi Arabia has denied, of course, as you say. So uh, you say the international community should do something about this. What should they do? How should they react? This is Saudi Arabia, which has violated human rights over the years and has not been reprimanded. What happens now when all the evidence is clearly pointing to the administration, pointing to the monarchy as being behind what has happened? I think that there is um, a bit of concern on my part and a lot of preventive um, security and uh, the, security analysts out there because it, we should not just be waiting for the U.S. to be the one to 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 call the shot. There is OPEC, you know, there is the United Nations, you know, they, they all need to come out and say, okay, Saudi Arabia, there is something that happened under your watch. You should be held responsible and set an example because if you remember a few years ago, um, Countries like Nigeria also was caught up in this kind of controversy where, you know, uh, we wanted to bring back somebody that we feel should be brought back to Nigeria under a military regime. And if not for a very brave um, official within the UK, you know, Diko will have been brought back in a, in a carton. So these kind of things need to be stopped and we must not allow it. Government must not take laws into their hands. There must be rules that need to be obeyed. And especially 
um, journalists who are doing a, a very important job must be protected. But what would be the reprimand for Saudi Arabia? What do you think would be the reprimand for them? I don't think it should stop at just a uh, financial reprimand, but I think some of their, their, some of their diplomats in, um, in Turkey should be expelled. I think other countries should follow suit and expel some of their uh, diplomats. Uh, that would send a very strong message. I think also, apart, apart from that, I think there should be an uh, issue of uh, arms deal. Should, there should be a bit of a suspension on that and ask them to put in place certain rules to ensure safety of individuals that do not agree with government. Everybody cannot agree with your government. There must be a way in which you manage those expectations. Mr. Oludo, thank you so much for joining us on Diplomatic Channel. Thank you very much for having me. This is where we put a pause on our discussion today on Diplomatic Channel, but that does not mean you should put a pause on your thoughts. We'd like to hear what you think. Tell us. The addresses to reach us on are on your screen. I am Amarachi Ubani. I'll see you next time.